Hey, AP Physics C, it's Horner, and we're going to look at 2006 AP Physics C Mechanics number two. And you have a nonlinear spring is compressed at various distances. So they show you that. And the force required to compress it is measured at each distance. Uh, the data is shown below. So it's nonlinear, which means that if you plot the force versus the stretch, you are not going to get this. Okay, so let's try to figure out what we get. Uh, and they actually help us with this a little bit. They show us that, assume that the magnitude of the force applied by the spring is in the form of Fx is equal to Ax squared. Um, and they said which quantity should be graphed in order to yield a straight line whose slope could be used to calculate the num numerical value for A. So this is really simple. I mean, they've given you the answer. So you really just have to uh, plot F versus X squared. So if you did f versus x, you would get this. Uh, it'd be quadratic. And to get it so that it's a linear, we just have to square the x value. So that's your answer for this first one is just f versus x squared. The other thing you could do is you could do the square root of f versus x. But I think it's much easier to just do um, the first thing that we talked about, which is f versus x squared. So it's calculate values for any quantities identified in A that are not given in the data. Record those values in the table above. So we're going to do that for the x squared. Make sure you put x squared and then put the unit, which is a meter squared. This will be 0 0.0025. Uh, 0 0.10 squared, uh, this is going to be 0 0.010. 0 0.015 is 0 0.023. 0 0.020 is going to be 0 0.040. And then uh, 0.25 is going to be 0.063. So there's your values. And as usual, instead of just giving you data and saying don't do anything with it, they're going to have you actually plot it. Um, so on the axis below, it wants us to go ahead and plot all these data points. We want to make sure that when we plot the data points that we do put an appropriate scale and that we label everything. So this one is force in newtons. We know that this is x squared, which means that it has to be meters squared. Don't forget that. And now we need to put our values in. So uh, if you look, you see that the biggest value for uh, force is about 106. So let's go through and do this by 10. So I'm not going to put every 10 down. So 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. So that 106 is going to be just up above here. Uh, and then the other values, uh, when they're squared, we need to start with 0.01. So let's move over here, 0.01, and then 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0.06. Uh, and now we can plot. So the first point is probably somewhere in about that area. Next point is about right here. Our next point is somewhere around here. We've got another point that is right kind of about the 70 for the 0.04. Um, uh, so it's just about 70, it's 60 something. And then we have our very last point, which seems to be way up here. Now, as we've done before, we want to make sure that we get all three of the, uh, all three of the uh, points. So it just says uh, plot the quantities. Uh, it doesn't say anything more than that. It just says plot the quantities. So let's look at D. D says using your graph, calculate A. So we've uh, we've got this. We need to actually go through and go ahead and put on our best fit line. So we're going to start down here, kind of make it move up. We're going to try to get it so that we've got points on both sides of the line if we can. So we'll put that there, and we'll let it move itself back over. Now I've got a point below. I see a point above. The rest of the points are actually then probably on the line, especially if I use this thicker line. And that is where you would get all of your points. So you have to make sure to get that three points that you've done all the things that are there. OK, so let's go on and go to letter D. For letter D, it says using your graph, they want you to calculate A. Uh, and so we need to look at our equation again. So F is equal to A x squared. And so a has got to be a constant. And probably for this one, it is the slope. Uh, so if you plot f versus x squared, then a is your slope. So if a is the slope, that's going to be equal to slope. That's equal to the change in f over the change in x squared. 
Uh, we're going to use two values here. Let's use 100 newtons minus 50 newtons. And the appropriate uh, positions are 0 0.06 meters squared minus 0 0.03 meters squared. And you should end up with a slope of 1.7 times 10 to the, oops, sorry, 1.7, let's do that again, 1.7 times 10 to the third newtons per meter squared. Uh, and that will be our slope. Uh, you get uh, two points for doing this correctly, so you've got uh, you've got everything down there. Um, the next part says the spring is then placed horizontally on the floor. One end of the spring is fixed to the wall. A cart of mass 0.5 kilograms moves on the floor with negligible friction and collides head on with the free end of the spring, compressing it to a maximum distance of 0.1 meters. So now we've compressed this thing all the way down to about 0.1 meters. Calculate the work done by the cart and compressing the spring that 0.1 meters from its equilibrium length. So equilibrium is going to be it's zero length essentially. So for letter E we're going to have to use a little bit of calculus. Uh, for letter E we know that work is equal to the integral of force times uh, the change in distance uh, and we want to make sure that we uh, give the correct limits for this. So for this one we're going to say that work is equal to now we know that we compressed it a maximum so our maximum here we're going to put on top, so that's 0 0.10. Our minimum is 0 because there's no compression there. And then remember the equation that we had was ax squared, uh, and then we'll do dx. If I want to integrate this, remember what I need to do is I have to do, um, I'm going to take the 2, I add 1 to it, and then I take and I take one third so 2 plus 1 is 3 so that means I do one third in front so if I'm going to do that I need to say this would be 1 over 3 times a times 0 0.1 so that is our x value squared okay um, now that I have it I'm going to go ahead and uh, I need to put in my values now so I'm going to say this is equal to one-third. Uh, A is 1.7 times 10 to the third. And then if I take 0.1 and I square it, I end up with 1 times 10 to the negative third uh, meters cubed, if you want to use a unit there. This is Newton meters squared because that's our force constant or our constant. Uh, and that's that's what you'll end up with. So why did we use uh, 0.1 here? Because that was the maximum compression. And you'll notice that uh, with the zero value, you don't have to put the zero value in because it will give us a zero result. Um, you do all that work, and you're going to end up with work is equal to 0.57 joules. So the integration here is pretty simple. Uh, just got to remember the rule uh, is uh, we have ax to the n. So you just take n plus 1, and then you do 1 over uh, n plus 1. Uh, and that makes it the easiest way to do this. Uh, last thing to do is calculate the speed of the cart just before it strikes the spring. So we know that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is equal to 1 half mv squared. So now we can say v is equal to the square root of 2 times the work all over the mass. Uh, we just calculated what the work was. So here we're going to say 2 times 0.57 joules. And we're going to divide that by 0.5 kilograms. And we should get a speed or a velocity of 1.5. It's really speed meters per second. Uh, and so I think that is it. That's really not a bad problem. The calculus is fairly simple, as it usually is. And uh, there's really no more to that problem.